I was born in Cape Town in 1926, and my father was a GP, and I used to go on high schools with him in the coloured areas near Maitland, where we lived. My parents did come from Lithuania, and my dad was able to buy a small house in, in Bertrams, where I was born. Habonim came to South Africa in 1930. It had been started in England, and it proved to be a movement which had a profound effect on my life. And the leaders of the movement were not ideal at that time. They came to see me and asked me whether I would take over the leadership of the movement. I spoke to Selma about it and she reluctantly conceded that I should do it for six months. Well, I said I would do it and the six months turned out to be 25 years. After school, I went to UCT and I started medicine. And um, in my third year, I went up to Johannesburg on a new SAS conference. And while I was there, I went to a party and there I met Jules. In 1946, I joined the class for the first time for the second year of the LLB. It was a chair next to me that was vacant and in walked a very majestic looking young black uh, student who turned out to be Nelson Mandela and he sat next to me. In about 1950, Nelson Mandela started practice as an attorney in partnership with Oliver Tambo. They practiced as Mandela and Tambo in Chancellor House in Johannesburg. And uh, one day Mandela came to see me to seek my advice because they'd received a letter from the government telling them to vacate that building because it was reserved for white people only and they should go and practice in Soweto. And I argued the case before the Land Tenure Advisory Board. And uh, miraculously, it was successful. And they allowed Mandela and Tamba to go on practicing there. In 1971, to my absolute surprise, Helen Sussman phoned and asked me if I would stand as a candidate in the Johannesburg City Council, uh, which they were trying to get a progressive party member. It was obvious I wouldn't get in. There were 13 good candidates, not my expertise. So I agreed and for six weeks I ran around knocking on doors with my two agents, Tony Bloom and Barry Jammy. And finally came the election, and to my horror, I was the only one of the 14 elected. I became very involved in the problems of Soweto, and one of the major things was there was no electricity, and I fought the battle to have high mast lighting put into the whole of Soweto. And then I also devised a plan with the city engineer for the electrification of Soweto, one of my close friends at the Johannesburg Bar was Ismail Muhammad, and he asked me to become a judge and I sat as a judge of the Appeal Court of Lesotho and it led to my also being called upon to be the, the judge, an appeal judge in the court of six male judges from South Africa in Swaziland. People came to me from the disadvantaged areas with all kinds of problems. One of them was they were being evicted from the flats that they were occupying in Hilbra and because it was considered a white area. And as a result, we started an organization called Act Stop, Action to Stop Evictions. We had two sides. One was the activist side where a lot of us, including the Black Sash, would go and stand in front of the houses that were being evicted and prevent it. The other side was the legal side, which Jules was instrumental in starting. And I then ultimately argued a case of Rex versus Adams, which is now a reported judgment on the, on the basis of whether people could occupy premises in so-called white areas because there was no other place for them to occupy. I fought that in the Magistrates Court, in the High Court of the Transvaal, and in the Appellate Division. And uh, 
I lost in all those courts. We lost the case. It was quite disgraceful that he lost it, but because of that, there was a moratorium for two years on the evictions. And the Group Areas Act in those parts of Hilbra and others broke down. One of Selma's great achievements, in my view, was the establishment of Operation Hunger, which was first called a Hunger Concern Program. This she did together with a well-known doctor and activist, Ntato Motlana. In 1998, I started something called the Palliative Medicine Institute with a very good nurse called Ntlantra Duba. And our mission was to get palliative care into the mainstream of medicine. Jules and Selma Brody both received honorary degrees from BITS. Jules, a lion-hearted fighter for justice in the legal community. Selma, a distinguished member of the, of the medical faculty, a political figure, also a fighter for just causes in her retirement, in AIDS, in, in palliative care. And together, both of them towering figures in the struggle for social justice in our country. In Jules and, and Selma, I think we see two extraordinary individuals. They are decent to the core. They are people who are always available, no matter what hour of day or night, to help those who need their help. And there have been very, very many who have. Um, they, I think, represent a shining example of what is good about the Jewish community. Without the wonderful support and tolerance of Jules and of my three children, I would never have been able to achieve anything. And it has been an amazing partnership over 63 years in every possible way. I find it difficult to put into words how blessed I feel as a result of the wonderful relationship I've had with Selma over 63 years. She has been an inspiration to me and without her, I would not have achieved what I managed to do in my lifetime. Jules and Selma Brody have been married 63 years. Combined, they have more than 100 years of activism, a lifetime of achievements for South Africa.